Okay, so I apologize for not having any video roll for this breakdown, but I was doing this at work, so the fact that I was really able to get anything at all, you know, is a bit to ask for, so I'm going to do my best. This was a pretty simple job. I've done a few of these different kinds of these planetaries now, and this was probably the easiest one that I've ever done. So if you're considering doing this, um, I wouldn't hesitate at all. Even the the large the larger telehandlers like the the JLGs are fairly simple. The hardest one I actually had to do was uh, for a Mahindra tractor. Uh, I had a bunch of shimming and whatnot. They needed doing that. So this heavier, more industrial, heavy duty stuff is actually a lot easier to work on. And I'll leave the link in the description to the JLG telehandler axle that I had torn apart. Uh, you can use that for reference. If you're doing a final drive or uh, some sort of axle teardown on a, any equip, on equipment that you don't have uh, any information for, this stuff is actually fairly simple. Uh, if you've watched a few different videos on this stuff, the, the fundamentals are all the same, so don't feel too intimidated. And, um, you know, if, if you, I'll leave a link as well to my Discord and uh you know maybe you can try to get a hold of me that way if you have any particular questions so the first thing obviously that you're gonna have to do is jack this up and take the wheel off so i'm not gonna you know explain that but the uh the second thing so this axle actually this machine had a different braking system that i that i hadn't seen before this is the first time i've seen this i thought this had like standard automobile hydraulic or uh what would be like uh yeah they're hydraulic brakes but see the telehandlers have a, a uh, their braking system is tied directly into the hydraulic pump and i thought this was uh because of the brake lines and everything uh, i thought this was like a service brake with a master cylinder and a slave cylinder like you would have on an automobile but this still actually does pump through the hydraulic pump so when the machine isn't running uh, this machine won't really have any brakes uh, which I actually kind of found out today um, anyways so uh, the way this machine differs is that the e-brake is on the drive shaft and you'll see that in some of the the cater, caterpillars as well. It's more like the it's like a Euro style thing to have the uh, e-brake on the drive shaft, and it's more of like the American style, the heavier duty runs that uh, that have the e-brake tied into the hydraulic system. So what ends up happening, the e-brake and the service brake are on both on the same hydraulic line that runs to the axle. And, uh, and on these ones, the e-brake is uh, mechanical by a lever on the drive shaft, and the, uh, the service brake is hydraulic lined through the pedal. Anyways, all you really need to know here is use two wrenches uh, to break these. You know, probably wouldn't hurt using even a crow foot wrench. Break this line loose, and, uh, and the difference is on the on the large again the JLGs the large telehandlers because the e-brake is on that same line it pumps fluid constantly like even when the machine's not on because that's your e-brake so you're going to want to cap that off on this you don't have to worry about this you just break that nut loose lift the line up uh, elevate it and then you won't have to worry about fluid coming out you're going to have to bleed the brakes which is really simple uh, once you go to put it back together, but uh, this uh, the the brakes on this are pretty simple. So just break that nut loose, undo that bracket that you see right there, elevate it, get it out of the way, and then you can get on releasing the uh, the caps that hold the uh, essentially kingpins that hold the knuckle on. So here is it disassembled, and maybe we can have one more look here. The other thing I want to mention is you can see. That the tie, what would it be, the tie rod end? Uh, that was pretty simple. That's one nut, and you pound that up from the bottom. Uh, it's got a keeper nut on it, 
you release that keeper nut, you pound that pin up, and then the uh, tie rod end will come loose, and then you will be able to take the upper and lower, essentially king pins out, uh, the bearing uh, pins. And, okay, so I didn't get, so I actually started taking pictures after I'd already disassembled this, so I'm going to explain this to you, and you'll see this in more detail in the other video that I have of taking the JLG uh, knuckle apart. What, you, what I do here is the first thing I'll do is I'll unbolt the top cap, and then that way the weight of the knuckle will push down on that cap. And then if you have to use some extra force, a lot of the times that cap will just push out on its own, that top cap. And if not, you can kind of, you know, get like a, a dead blow hammer and start banging on it. And that will usually help force it out. If it's really stuck in there, you take a chisel and you pound at that seam there. It's even beveled for it. And you can pound on that seam with a chisel, uh, go back and forth. You know, sometimes you may have to use a little bit of heat on the uh the knuckle itself this one came apart really easily though uh that top cap so once you get that top cap out then you can say i put a bunch of washers in there and then what i'll do is i'll put that top cap back in and then uh, i don't really have a good picture of it but what i'll do is i'll put that top cap back in and i'll put two bolts in and then i'll bolt i'll i'll, I'll screw those bolts down and use that top cap with the washers in there to force that bottom cap out. And the bottom cap actually fought me a fair bit on this one. So with those washers in there, that uh, that allows it to bottom out sooner. And then that'll put force on that bottom cap pushing downwards. And then again, you got to go down there sometimes, give it some heat, hit it at the seam with some chisels, kind of bang on it, and it'll usually come loose. Uh, you know, sometimes you can fight them, sometimes you won't have to. So this is me after I got the planetary out, whole knuckle out, and sitting on the bench. And another interesting thing about this one that's different from a lot of other axles that I've done is the axle shaft and the spindle are C-clipped inside of the planetary, the final drive, and not in the axle tube. So I think in the, in the JLG there's like a set screw that holds the uh, the axle shaft in. And uh, on this one, there's nothing at all. It just slides right out. Uh, so what you'll have to do is pull that all out gently without you know banging up any of those bearing faces and, uh, and get it out on the bench and then do a full disassembly of it to, uh, to get that stupid C-clip out of the final drive so you can pull that axle shaft and that spindle out. So the first thing you have to do is pull the two bolts uh, out that will allow you to separate the two halves of the hub. So you get those two bolts out and then lift up on the knuckle and it'll come straight out, should come apart pretty easily. And then once you got that out, and unfortunately I don't really have too many videos or pictures of that, uh, but once you get that out, it comes out super easy, slides straight up. The planet gears are part of the bottom part of that hub here, there, that bottom, uh, that bowl essentially. There's pins, uh, uh, dowels, I guess, that are uh, molded into that case there. And that's what the sun gears are C clipped into, or sorry, the planet gears are C clipped into that. And then. The rest, the ring gear, the sun gear, while well, the sun gear is essentially the spindle, all of that will come together as assembly. You won't have to worry about things falling apart or going all over the place. It all stays together. It's all clipped together uh, until you get it apart, set it on the bench, lean it on the side, and then you're able to get at that C-clip there, which is a little dirty, but you can see I, I pull that C-clip off off and then you, there's the sun gear so that's the first gear that you'll pull off that spindle shaft that spline spindle shaft there and just remember the orientation you know remember your witness marks when you're pulling this off i don't think it'd matter if you put it on backwards but just for the sake 
you know, put it back together. So, and then the second gear in there, that one will slide out as well. And that's the one that splines onto your brake discs, your wet brake discs. You pull that one out as well. Again, remember the orientation. This one probably is more important. And um, those wet brake discs are going to slide down in uh, the steel discs. It's all going to stay together. The ring gear, all the steel discs, all that's going to stay together just fine. It's all C-clipped in. Uh, but those wet brake discs will slide down a little bit. You're going to have to kind of finagle them a little bit when you go to put it back together, but it's really not any of an issue. You can get your fingers in the holes, as you can see there in the, in the friction plate discs and you lift them up and kind of move them around it's a little bit of screwing around but it's really not too bad get that sun gear or sorry get that second uh, uh, gear off that uh, spindle shaft you can pull the axle shaft and the spindle shaft out through the back and then you can start pulling your seals and your bearings out uh, unfortunately the seal here is one of those really hard uh, steel case seals uh so it really fought me to get it out of there i was using a like seal pullers i was using a bunch of different stuff i had actually make this kind of crazy looking little puller uh because they didn't have any slide hammers or anything where i was working the best thing to do was just begin a slide hammer and then drill uh into that seal and then pull it out with a slide hammer but we didn't have one so i had to kind of make this crazy little contraption here get it in there you can see all the damage that i was doing with the different polars wasn't able to get it out there it was really in there pretty good uh, and then i was able to bang on that pull that seal out i uh, could see me uh modifying this polar because i was going to try to use it to pull that bearing out as well so in in the i don't, I don't think they have that bearing maybe there is that bearing in the in the larger planetaries i think it's just a bushing though i think larger planetaries just have a bushing uh, this one has a bearing though and that stupid race was a real pain to get out of there so i modified this polar ended up completely destroying the polar uh didn't work so what i ended up having to do uh and i guess kind of luckily i ended up destroying the bearing as well so i pulled the cage and all the needles out uh, another good thing to do maybe would be to, uh, in that hole there, pack, uh, pack some uh, paper towels and whatnot in there to catch any of the debris so it's not getting all mixed in with your clutch plates and whatnot. That's a, that's a good uh, note to make as well. And then I ended up having to take this piece of 3 8 inch thick flat bar and kind of round the edges of it off to fit inside that race for the bearing. So like I said, I kind of busted apart the carrier and all the needles and all that, but I just could not get that race out of there for the life of me. So I ended up welding this piece of flat bar into it and then taking this rod from the backside and pounding it out that way. Uh, it took me a long time. I actually ended up having the service manager uh, tell me to do it this way it was i felt so stupid for not figuring it out on my own it was pretty obvious once uh, he mentioned it but then i was able to get that stupid race out of there no problem uh it will fight you it will fight you so uh be prepared for that and then this was what we machined up to pound that new bearing in and you can see there there's a little bit of an oil gallery in that bearing so you're going to want to make sure that this is seated all the way down properly so that's why we made this uh little driver here i was going to try to use like one of those uh, seal pushers but then none of them fit really well so we ended up just machining this and uh i got that in there really well uh worked really well and then i used a little bit of assembly lube on those needles there because this will be lubricated by oil but it's not going to get uh, a lot of oil uh, right off the bat. So throw a little bit of assembly lube in there. You know, maybe even a little bit of grease probably wouldn't hurt if you don't have assembly lube. I don't see why not. I just wouldn't go too crazy on the grease because that will probably restrict some of the uh, fluid flow. Then I ended up pounding in the new uh, seal on top of that. 
And the other note we'll make here is you can see the frost on this bearing. You're going to want to throw that bearing into the freezer for a fair amount of time, at least 15 minutes, you know, a little bit more, you know, even more when hurt. Colder you can get that, you know, shrink that bearing, and you're going to have a lot easier of a time sliding that in. The other thing I want to mention, which I didn't do and which I wish I would have done, was maybe cleaned up the uh, the hole a little bit better. I didn't want to do too much grinding or anything. You know, I was going to maybe take a little die grinder flapper wheel and go in there. But I was, you know, I was trying to avoid any of that grit and, uh, you know, those grinding, that grinding dust getting into there and getting any more contaminants than I already had from the seals. But uh, I really fought me putting this back in as well. And especially this stupid uh, seal, these stupid steel seals, man, they're such an absolute nightmare to deal with. I froze this as well, and again, I fought it like heck. So you're going to want to maybe take even a little piece of emery cloth, something like that, clean that uh, surface up a little bit, and then make sure you freeze these, and they should go in fairly easy. If you don't have seal pullers, you know, a big socket will end up working. I actually ended up having to use a big socket on this because the seal puller just ended up uh, damaging it, it kind of like cone shaped because it wasn't a, a perfect fit for this because uh, that uh, the width of the freaking face there was so wide uh, it ended up actually coning that out a little bit but it didn't do any damage to it so you can see there uh, it ended up pushing the center in so I ended up just going and grabbing a great big socket anyways and driving that in just make sure it goes in straight the whole way I don't know how many seals I buggered up, especially the rubber ones from uh, I'm just going in sideways and just fighting with them. I hate driving seals, and I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. So here's me putting that first sun gear back in, the one that splines into the friction discs. Again, you just kind of put it in there, wiggle it back and forth, move it up and down. You'll get it eventually. It's nothing crazy to it. Uh, there's me sliding the axle shaft in after I get those spline. It's easier to put that gear in there first, then slide your axle shaft back in. And then because of that new seal, that axle shaft is going to fight you a little bit. So uh, here's me sliding on the sun gear, and it's not going all the way. It's like, well, shoot, I figured, I felt like I got that in there pretty good. It should have gone. You know, it felt like I was bottomed out, but I wasn't even close. So I ended up blocking this up a little bit using a good rubber mallet here and pounding like heck on the back of that knuckle uh, to drive it in there the rest of the way so that I was able to get the C-clip back on. And, uh, and then after that, you know, it was pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. I was able to use the forklift to put this back on here. Uh, when I took it off, I actually just slid it onto a cart a little uh, hydraulic, uh, you know, a little raising, lowering little cart, shop cart. Uh, but when I was going to put it back on, uh, it was just easier to use the forklift or you got a shop crane or something like that. Obviously, that would have been the best uh, forklift work. It would have been a real fight. You might want to do it with two people. If all you got is like some little hand cart that you're pushing around. You get that... Uh, that shaft lined up in there and then once you get to about this far uh, you're going to want to kind of keep three things in mind you're going to want to keep that height and then you're also going to want to make sure that the um, tie rod end goes into the slot right you don't want to get it all made it in and then figure out that you uh, got to pull it back out to get that tie rod in end into a slot and then once you get about this far you're going to have to grab a hold of that stupid uh, axle shaft and finagle it around and kind of you know rock it back and forth and you'll eventually get it into the splines inside the axle housing and uh, there's the tie rod end I drove that in and then I started putting the upper and lower cap in I started with the upper cap 
get that lined up as well as possible. I have destroyed one of these seals actually before putting these caps back in. So make sure that's lined up really well. Put a little anti-seize on it as well. I think I have a picture of some anti-seize right there. I'll get that top cap in. And then uh, I think I'll do the bottom cap after. So I'll get the top cap in, bolt it all the way down. And then I'll start putting the bottom cap in. And the bottom cap is going to be a little bit of a pain in the butt. Um, so the reason I took this picture here is because you get all four bolts in. And uh, if you're having a problem lining up the bolt holes, just you can kind of just tap on the, uh, the edge of it uh, and, and pound it horizontally. I guess I don't know what the best way to explain that is. Anyways, you'll get the bolt holes lined up after a little, you know, pretty easily and then you you get the the bolts started and get them all started evenly and you know you can do it with an impact it's even better if you do it with a ratchet and just give them each like one or two turns at a time because uh it's going to want to bind up on you real bad here you want to get uh the knuckle as horizontal as perfectly as you can that's going to make this a lot easier and then also you're going to want to drive all four of those bolts in evenly as you go up and that's uh there's really the only way you're going to be able to avoid the binding there and then make sure that when you go to put your brake line back together that you put this clip on the outside i don't think you really could do it the other way but just make sure see now you can kind of see here i screwed up a little bit i actually turned the uh whole cap 180 degrees you can see the witness mark there but it's not really going to matter uh they can go in anyway. And then it's just a matter of hooking the brake line back up and bleeding the brakes. So you cannot bleed the brakes when the engine is not on. So what you are going to have to do is get, uh, you're going to need a second person here and uh, fire the vehicle up, get them to hold the brake pedal down, crack that bleeder valve and in one shot you should pretty much be able to get it you'll see all the air come out you'll see a bunch of clear fluid come out tighten that back down if you need to do it twice do it just to double you know be certain but it's crazy amount of hydraulic pressure behind that because it is powered by the hydraulic pump it is not a uh, master cylinder like what's in a vehicle tighten your wheels back down I just impacted them back down with a great big impact, and uh, I'm not entirely sure what the torque spec on this is on this, but this uh, gigantic, uh, I think it's a Mac or a Milwaukee impact, broke them loose, so it tightened them back down. Here is the, this isn't the service manual, this is, well I guess this would be the uh, service manual, but it's not the... Um, you know, it's, this is the maintenance manual. This wasn't a service manual. But anyways, here's model number, I think. I don't know why it's all in uh, German. Or I don't know what the heck I'm even reading there. But there's some numbers there. Maybe that means something to you. Um, I did not use this at all. Um, I was trying to get like a parts breakdown because I wasn't sure if it was going to be a C-clip on that planetary or not. Wasn't sure why that was fighting me to try to get that out of there. I got the parts breakdown, and there wasn't even a C-clip on the parts breakdown, so you must have the wrong parts breakdown or something, but uh, now you know when you dig into this, there's probably a C-clip in there. Uh, if you got any questions, leave them to, uh, down below, and I'll try to help you out with that. It's been a long day. I don't know, you can probably hear it in my voice, so I'm going to wrap this video up and get to editing, and uh, we'll get at you in the next video.